Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea to New York City to talk with attorney Tammy Lee, the managing partner of the New York law firm of Goldstein and Lee. Tammy's law practice focuses on immigration into the United States. She helps her clients cross the sea to live and work in the United States. Aloha, Tammy. It's, it's good to see you. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Nice to see you, and thanks for inviting me. Well, it, it's a good way to get together in these strange days. And yeah. uh, I do, I do want to get into asking you a bunch of questions and uh, about, about immigration. Uh, you know, even during these politi politically divisive and COVID pandemic times, Immigration in the United States is a topic of great interest. And I, I found that out as, amongst some of my lawyer friends who have international clients. And I wanna thank attorneys, Alan Fujimoto, Ben Lau, Larry Foster, and Shimpe Oki for sending me many excellent questions when I told them that I'd be talking with you today. So let's get started. Okay, sounds good. All right. so. Many of the questions that I got uh, from my uh, brain trust involve <laughs> political climate right. in the United States and uh, over the past few years and how that has affected immigration law in, into the United States. So, for example, what, what changes have you observed in the past five or six years with respect to your practice and specifically pre, during, and post the Trump administration? Well, I think politics has always been part of immigration. I, I think um, ever since immigration was a factor, it, it, it's been part of um, immigration and, and U.S. immigration in particular. Um, during the past five years, there's been a lot of changes, I would say. I think Obama has always been um, viewed as pro-immigrant. Um, and I believe, um, you know, he did a lot of good. Uh, he implemented DACA during that time. Um, so all these children or, or all these individuals who came in illegally or came in when they were children and, and became illegal were able to obtain some kind of, um, you know, status in the U.S. But during the Obama era, um, there were also a lot of individuals who were deported more than Bush, Bush's administration. Um, and then and then Trump came in. And with Trump, I think um, the rhetoric there was um, he was pro-American and people interpret that, interpreted that as being anti-foreigners, right? Um, so a lot of his um, programs that he implemented, which were a lot, um, were restricted, I would say. Um, he definitely had Muslim bans um, in terms of uh, certain Muslim country people coming to the, into the US. Um, he, of course, tried to get rid of DACA. Um, he implemented um, various rules to make it harder for certain people to get visas, like the H-1B visa, there are more restrictions placed, um, and making it, I guess, more difficult even for immigration when they're adjudicating a case, making it a um, higher standard. Um, and also, he, I think, limited budgets for the various agencies, where their budgets were not increased, or there were delays, and so they're just delays all around. Um, so yeah, during the Trump administration, a lot happened. Um, and the current administration, um, although they, they have a lot of plans, they haven't really been, to been able to implement much at this point because they're trying to undo a lot of the Trump administration um, acts. And that's gonna take a while. Um, I believe they said it could take up to a year to do that. Um, so you, you haven't seen a big change uh, with respect to immigration just because there's a, there's kind of a cleanup going on? Is that is that the right way I to would say that, Yeah, they're trying to undo some of the um, you know the some of the bills that were proposed or some of the um, uh, proclamations that were implemented. Yeah, those are taking a little bit of time, um, and some of them have to go through agencies also. So those are taking time as well. And and the number of the number of visas was reduced under Trump, as I understand, and then as my brain trust has advised me, and the the you know it, it, you see Biden changing that. Is I mean, 
Are they, is, is, that, is there anything ongoing to, to make it easier to get a visa besides the, the uh, trying to go backward, if you will? Well, I think um, during the Trump administration, there were a lot of reports saying that um, there were a lot of Americans who were not able to um, get jobs because of foreigners. Um, but some of the research that was, you know, that, that was used to make those arguments were actually false or uh, misleading because um, there was a shortage of certain, at least certain areas. Um, and so I think the um, Biden administration is going to be listening to the different industries to see, you know, where, if anything, you know, could be increased or not. Um, but to be honest, it's very difficult to make any changes when it comes to visas because Congress has to get involved. And, you know, uh, there's always a struggle there right now, even though, um, you know, the Democrats are there, there's a lot of resistance still, right? Again, politics coming into play. So, so even with the change of administration, uh, what I hear you saying is that be, there, there's still the political uh, di di diversity that is preventing uh, more immigration into the United States. That that exists. I think so. I think there's a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. And you talked about the America First policy uh, in your, I mean which was, I think Trump was behind that uh, and it comes a historical policy, I think. Uh, and that reduced business visas, is that correct? Is that, is that what happened? Well, the way it played out is, um, as an example, if, if an individual went to an interview, okay, and they were being interviewed for a particular visa and um, based on the just the regulations, they qualify. You would have an officer ask questions like, you know, can't an American do this job, <laughs> right? Um, and, and that could be a challenging question uh, because before that was not necessarily the standard. Um, so an officer had a little bit more leeway in trying to, I guess, adjudicate a case. Um, that was definitely a challenge. Um, okay. You found this in your own practice? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, now those questions have disappeared. They're not asking that question. Although I still, when I still prep clients, I do, you know, tell them that it's that, you know, that definitely was a question during the Trump administration. So it is a question that sh they should be able to answer. Okay. But and yes. You, do you feel then that going forward, there's a, a more, um, open or friendly attitude towards immigrants and business visas? Is that, is, that, is that a correct assumption to make or not within the administration? Yeah, I think, okay. So one of, the, one of the changes that we saw during the Trump administration was as an example, is the H-1B visa. When you filed an extension, before the, the immigration service kind of gave deference to the prior approval, of a, of a visa and um, when they reviewed an extension, um, they could make their decision based on perhaps a prior petition as well as a new documentation that was submitted for the extension. During the Trump administration, they pretty much got rid of that. And so you have to prove again to the satisfaction of immigration that this individual qualifies for the H-1B visa, even if immigration in the prior petition or the, you know, the original, um, let's say period of stay was approved. Um, so yeah, there is a change in attitude, I would say. Um, like I said, they're undoing some of the Trump administration's rules. But it's a long-term project and you have to advise your clients of that, I guess. And that's, yeah. you tell them and you tell that you, I mean, you give them advice on how the best way to talk with the immigration officials and it, it, it's still, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing project is what I hear. Yes. Definitely. Okay. All right. So next, COVID. Okay. A lot of questions about COVID. How has COVID affected business immigration into the United States? And, you know, one of my trusted folks that gave me some questions said when the COVID hit, visa issuance basically stopped at embassies overseas. Now, this is a, a lawyer that deals a lot with international clients. Have things recovered? 
with respect to that? Are the embassies overseas now able to help people with issue, with, with the visas, well, a practical standpoint because of COVID? It's not business as usual. Um, they are adjudicating some visas, but the majority of the consulates are, I believe um, there was a report that said in August, at least 65% of the consulates were um, or embassies were either closed or partially opened. Um, in July, I believe it was 75%. So um, they are opening, uh, but very in limited ways. Um, also, many of these consular posts, they don't even have appointments available for, I mean, I think as an example in uh, Brazil, as, you know, which is under, is, which is one of the countries that are on the travel restricted list. Um, the earliest appointment will be maybe May, June, 2022. Wow. <laughs> um, now you can make a request for an expedite, but you have to meet certain standards. So- That's something you, you help your clients with too, is that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's not, and it doesn't work for everybody because it really depends on the individual's role at the company and what they're doing, you know, what kind of business it is and such. So yeah, so visas are being issued, but in limited um, numbers. Um, some consular posts are better than others. I would say probably Japan is actually one of the better posts. Um, they are, um, you can get appointments relatively quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm being cautious here. You can, in terms of compared to some of the other consular posts, um, Japan is actually working pretty well. Um, and, and over the, over the year, over last year, you know, there were a lot of changing rules in a COVID situation. Um, initially, you know, certain types of visas couldn't get visas, um, or if you could, you had to meet certain requirements. I mean, the COVID situation has changed the rules constantly, and it's still evolving. And, but at the rate that they're going, we're not quite sure when the consulates are going to be fully operational. I, I think they're definitely several months away from that, definitely. And, that, and that's just because of COVID. So we got politics and COVID both slowing the process of immigration, business immigration too, I, I guess, all types of immigration in, exactly. into the United States. And, and so, you know, pe people want the situation to change, people want things to get better, but it, it's still slow all over uh, for yeah. those, both of those reasons. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. And, and what do you tell your clients? I mean, I mean, what, what is your general advice? Yeah, so it's very difficult to advise clients because we, we don't have a crystal ball. We can't tell them, you know, when things are going to be um, better. We can't tell them when the travel restrictions are going to be lifted. So we just have to work with what we have. Um, when they have a, an individual that, that they want to bring into the U.S., you know, we do the normal assessment and then give them the real the reality of the situation that, you know, this individual might be able to come in in a few weeks or months, but it's also possible that they might not be able to come until next year. Um, and yeah, we're exploring all these options. We're exploring different consular posts to see if they would accept, you know, a third country national just because, you know, one consular post might um, have more appointments available. And that's not something that, um, off, sorry, um, practitioners do normally because you know, some consular officers might consider that what they call, you know, um, consular shopping, which is not the case. We're not trying to do that. We're just trying to get a visa for someone and some posts are just closed. Mm. So it's difficult. And, it's and, and, and you, you're finding that within your own practice over the five or six years, all of these things have, have slowed up, slowed up the process. Well, the, the, right. I mean, the more recent changes uh, with the appointment system, it's really because of COVID. Hmm. Um, during the Trump administration, I would say there was definitely, to a certain extent, some shift in terms of um, people coming into the U.S. to a certain degree. Um, you know, we definitely had clients who were constantly bringing in people in because of the type of business that they had. But there were also clients, um, and these might be more of a, a smaller scale types of business, that said, "Well, you know." maybe we should reconsider doing business in the U.S. because um, foreign nationals are not welcomed in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they decided to bring their business to maybe Canada or to a different country. 
So, so you know, I think the U.S. did lose some investment during the Trump administration um, because of um, the attitude people had of foreign nationals or foreign businesses, uh, which is kind of sad because I think you know investment in the U.S. is usually always good, right? Brings in more jobs and such. Well, you know, talking about going going back to COVID, and but I, I don't know if politics play any part in this too. But have you noticed? Uh, what types of businesses foreigners are investing in and using immigration to get into the United States? Is it, has COVID or politics affected that at all? Or, or I guess it has, it sounds like it has. Well, I don't know if COVID necessarily have affected that because uh, I think everybody understands that COVID is hitting everybody. Um, I think definitely with the Biden administration coming in, people have been more open about coming back to the US or bringing their business into the US. Um, in terms of the type of business that I'm seeing, um, interestingly enough, I see a lot of furniture business. <laughs> well, well, furniture? Yeah, which is oh, interesting. Well. Yeah, a yeah. lot of furniture business in the US. Um, and they're usually high-end furniture, but they're coming from Europe and, and they want to um, open up shop in the US because you know, these days you see all these online um, companies doing their furniture business, not necessarily having a, you know, brick and mortar store, um, maybe one, but, you know, doing, a, doing their online shopping, online presence, but they're bringing their business in the U.S. I, I think that we had like three or four furniture businesses. Okay. And a couple questions that 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 might be because everybody's at home. Yeah, and that might be COVID related. <laughs> yeah, and they're saying, "Hey, I think I'll fix up my house here a little exactly. bit." Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That, that is interesting. That's kind of a psychological trip. And I know. Are there and 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 you say these are European? Are there any other? Um, European, um, really all over. Uh, European. Um, well, a lot of the furniture comes from Europe, so I think Europe, we can understand that why, I understand for that reason, but um, a lot of South American type, uh, South Americans are also trying to open a business in the U.S. too, but usually those are financial related. Okay, any, and, any other, any, I'm sorry, any other trends besides the furniture? That's really interesting, but any, anything else that, that um, you see driving clients to leave their home countries? Uh, oh. I think always political environment is definitely uh, forcing people to leave their country, right? Um, South America, various countries in South America have always been tough, right? So you see a lot of people, um, especially the wealthier individuals um, coming into the U.S. because they just want to escape what's going on in their respective countries um, or, you know, for safety reasons. Um, I think uh, one of the trends that I did see during the Trump administration was when some of the visa uh, issues came up, a lot of people coming from certain countries that are, I guess, um, better established countries, people were going back home. They said, why should we deal with this here? As an example, and I, and I can say this because I'm Korean American, but a lot of the Korean American students who were coming to the US um, because they wanted to experience even working in the US, even for a couple of years, they were like just packing up their bag and going back home um, because of issues with visas. Um, and, you know, even though the economy in Korea sometimes could be a little tough, um, they thought, well, things are getting better even in Korea, you know, technology, the economy. So people were going back. Mm. And that is shows a a less of a desire to come to the United States and contribute, or I mean, and then in your experience, I mean, generally speaking, these uh, people want to be successful here, right? I mean, they Absolutely. want to they, they want to contribute to the economy, and now they're they're feeling at least at, at the Trump administration time, they're feeling a little bit of um, well, we're not really yeah. Uh, Wanted. I mean, do they still have the American dream? Is that I, definitely um, some of the industry that we work with is the financial industry, and then within the financial industry, 
um, there's a lot of IT involved, as well as other industries. Um, they're IT very heavy. You do see a lot of individuals coming from India or from China. Mm -hmm. um, they have the brain power, the IT brain power, the technological brain power that the US is lacking. So you do see a lot of individuals from those two countries coming. Um, and there's a continuous stream. And I think there's a continuous shortage in the US as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that the US always talks about, um, you know, and, and this is Trump too, he, he talked about this, in order to um, create more jobs for US, US workers or such, you know, we have to invest in the STEM programs because we have a shortage of that in the US. Um, unfortunately, the um, foreign countries like Korea, China, Japan, India, you know, they are heavily focused on STEM degrees. STEM, so, you know, you, you get a lot of people from those countries. And that could be a big advantage for us if they're here working for us and our economy is what I yeah. hear you say. Yeah. Now, what, when, when our... Uh, Foreign friends want to come to the United States. What type of visas are they looking for generally? What, what, what type of visas do our foreign friends prefer? Probably the most um, preferred visa might be the H-1B visa, um, which is a visa for specialty occupations or professionals. Um, loosely translated, it means that for the position, you normally require a bachelor's degree in a very specific field of study. Um, but the reason why that visa is desired by most is because once you have it, it's easier to transfer to other employers. Um, yes. Also, if you come from a particular country like India or China, where let's say green card numbers are oversubscribed, if you, if you have that H-1B visa and an employer sponsors you for a green card at a particular point in time, you could go beyond what is um, normally um, that there's usually a time limit on the visa, like you can go beyond that time limit. Okay, so that that is a, a big advantage if you have that type of a visa, I see. And, yeah. and you, you, you handle those type of things for your clients? We do. Uh, we definitely focus on business immigration. Um, so the various work visas. Uh, we do some family cases as well um, because it's something that just happens. You get clients who just happened to get married and, you know, they came in as a business client, but then, you know, you're not going to turn down a client who says, I'm getting married. Will you help me? We're like, of course. We have family cases as well. So love conquers all, I guess, is the, is the lesson to learn from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, now, looking forward, do you anticipate any changes in business immigration policies in the next few years? What, what, the, what are the, you know, what, what, what are we facing? What does it look like? Well, I think there has been a lot of talk on both sides that, you know, the U.S. immigration practice, uh, U.S. immigration rules have to have, there has to be a change, overhaul change. But, you know, they've been saying that for years now, and politics is always an issue, competing, you know, interests. Um, so trying to get anything past these, it seems like an uphill battle. Um, but yeah, I think they are trying to make some changes, but I, I, to be honest, I don't know, you know, what will be the final product, if it will happen, if it will happen during this administration, I don't know. I can only hope. I do think that um, some changes should be made. Um, I think, I understand where um, Americans are coming from when they say, you know, you know, they think some jobs are being um, taken over by foreign nationals, but it's not the case. Um, in certain situations, perhaps. I think there's, in any situation, there could be a little bit of an abuse, right? But in overall, I think most employers, most individuals, they want to comply with the law and they want to, um, you know, be able to run their operation with the most qualified individuals. And have you found, you know, your own clients, have they, have they helped the United States? Being here? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And I, go, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, you know, we have clients um, that are in the um, financial industry, in the energy industry, um, 
communication, social media. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, several years ago, um, it might have been more than 15 years ago, we represented this client who was doing social media. At that point, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> um, they were doing a lot of the, um, you know, Twitter stuff, um, you know, all those various things that, you know, we were just beginning to learn about. And I was like, God, what, you know, what can this company do? What can they do? Um, you know, what kind of money can they make? Amazingly, they did. And, it and they're huge now. <laughs> Yeah, I see. I see. Well, and, and, and you know, what, you know, we have a, a couple of minutes left. Um, you know, what, you know, I appreciate you talking about all these questions I'm throwing at you all, all over the place. And uh, it's just dealing with current events, but, but taking a look at the time you've been a lawyer, and mostly I understand you handle a lot of immigration uh, in your practice uh, for clients. Um, what have you learned about life and law from your immigration law practice? Well, immigration practice is such a personal matter for most of the, for all of our clients, to be honest. So um, whenever I deal with a client, um, when I speak to them and talk about their issues, you know, I do take, I try to understand their perspective, how that would affect them. Um, so whenever I work with a client, I definitely try to uh, emphasize what they're going through, understand what their issues or their concerns are. Because, you know, if I were in their situation, I would want someone to understand and really fight for me. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, that's what I try to do in life in general. And try to be the best person that I can be. Try to treat people the way I want to be treated. So in the same way, that's how you know we treat the practice. And I know that sometimes clients can be very difficult. And everybody has that, right? Once in a while. But I try to remind everybody, you know, you have to understand where they're coming from. You have to understand their frustration and you know their concern. So you know, take it easy and just you know try to help them and just be a little bit more patient. And, patient. and you learn. What I, I also I hear you you're saying you learn a little bit about life and also maybe culture too is that, is that right I mean you're learning oh, yeah. a little bit about people's cultures and and they and and they admire the United States too yes <laughs> definitely definitely the American dream is still alive and um, you know I want to help them in that regard okay definitely. well look tell me. Uh, I, I appreciate you being my guest today. It's good to see you. And, uh, you know, I, I understand that, uh, you know, the, we're in a volatile, changing immigration law system. And, you know, things will, it, it sounds like things are getting better. And it, and it sounds like there's good things in immigration law that make you a good person, make you a, a good lawyer. So thank you for being my guest today. And I look forward to the next time we can actually be together again. Absolutely in person, right? <laughs> of course. Aloha, everybody.